Sauer P226 pistol. This video will cover all the pistols of the same family, including the SIG X5s. Um, the only difference being is that the SIG P226 X5 competition is a single action only pistol with a safety switch instead of a decocker. That mechanism is the only part that differs uh, from the other P226 pistols and I'll cover that in this video as well. To get started, check the firearm is clear. It's clear. Then conduct a standard field strip. We'll start with the frame. Begin by taking the grip plates off. Decock the pistol and remove the uh, takedown lever by pushing on the right side and turning this. Next, remove the locking block. It needs to slide forwards and up. Attached to the locking block is the slide catch spring. This spring holds the slide catch down until activated by the magazine. It needs to sit in the locking block like so. Remember this for reassembly. Remove the trigger pivot pin. Now that the locking block has been removed, it should just push out in either direction. Keep in mind when you reinsert the pin for reassembly, the slot should be on the left side of the pistol and the cutouts should be underneath the pin. When it sits back in the pistol like this, the locking block needs to be able to slide diagonally down and over the pin. And the slots engage the cutout on the locking block. Once the pin's been removed, the slide catch lever should drop out. Remove the trigger bar spring. Keeping in mind that this spring has to sit in this notch here. The trigger and trigger bar should just pull out now. Bit of trouble there. Next, we need to remove the main spring assembly. Uh, you will need a screwdriver or similar flathead tool to remove it. The tool needs to be inserted into this slot here uh, to push this plastic piece up and out to release the mainspring. The way I like to do it is to put my hand around the spring to prevent it from jumping out uh, and then resting the frame on the desk. There should be three pieces to the mainspring assembly, the plastic seat, the mainspring itself, and the hammer strut. Next, we'll remove the decocking lever. The lever itself is made up of three parts, the lever, the spring, and a plate that sits on the inside and protrudes through to hold the spring captive. Now to remove the assembly, just pull the spring out of this hole, release the tension. Now the plate 
uh, I've been holding with my finger on the other side should just drop through once the spring has been removed. There's the plate. And then the lever can pull out. I thought I'd use this opportunity to show you how the SIG X5 competition differs from the standard PT26 pistols. The pistol pulls apart in exactly the same way, uh, except for under this grip plate you'll find the safety switch and the safety switch um, spring. And this grey plate here gives the switch its click. So to remove that you'll just need a Allen key, metric, yep, metric. Just remove this screw here. So before I pull that out, actually, I'll take out the spring. The spring is just held with an L shape uh, tip in this hole here and on this plate. The plate just pops off this way. Like so. And these are two separate pieces. Just continue unscrewing the safety switch. Alright, once that's out, just pull the screw out. And out comes the switch. Just pop out of both sides. Other than that, the frame uh, is exactly the same as I said, except the competition model has this magwell. The magwell is actually held in by a thin metal clip. You can see it just here at the bottom of the plastic seat. Um, this clip holds the magwell in, which slides off this way, uh, and the clip just sits underneath the mainspring. So the mainspring holds the clip in, which holds the magwell in. So if you want to take the magwell off, you'll have to take out the mainspring. Next we'll remove the magazine release. The button is held in place by a small uh, spring-loaded stud. Uh, just be very careful when you're removing it because uh, there's a tendency to shoot off. Now you'll need a sharp object. All I've got is my pocket knife. Now the stud is located at the base of the button. Uh, half of it is sticking out. You just need to push that down and then release it. The button will uh, come out. This is the stud with its own spring, and this is the magazine catch, also with its own spring. Next up, we'll remove the hammer assembly. Uh, now this is a bit tricky because it needs to go back in in exactly the same order. The ejector needs to be on the left of the sear, and the firing pin disconnect sits on the right of the sear. All three of these, uh, including the spring actually, all four parts are held in by this pin. There's a roll pin just in front of this. That doesn't need to be removed. That just holds the CS spring under tension. So leave that in there and just remove this pin here. I forgot to mention that that would be under spring pressure. Once the pin is removed, you'll have the sear spring, the eject plate, the sear itself, and that's the firing pin disconnect. Now it fell out while I was uh, pulling out the sear, but this pin here holds the hammer in so that just pushes out it's when the, when there's no mainspring in the gun that isn't being held in place by any sort of pressure so it just drops out but otherwise that would normally sit inside the hammer like so it's the hammer pivot 
Now your frame should be completely disassembled at this point, barring uh, the pin we mentioned earlier. This hammer return spring just here. So this spring, um, after the hammer is fired, so it's cocked, it fires and it hits the firing pin. The hammer return spring returns the hammer back a few millimeters so it sits off the firing pin. Uh, it's held in by that pin. Um, and I'm not gonna bother removing that. Oh, and also this back plate to the uh, magazine catch can come out now that there's no pressure on it. And that is a almost completely disassembled frame. Okay, uh, next up is the slab. So just remove the recoil spring and recoil spring guide. Uh, now with threaded barrel variants of the P226, you have to remove the thread guard first. It's a reverse thread. Right, now, to remove the firing pin uh, and the firing pin block, you have to punch this pin out here. Now, uh, and the uh, extractor, yeah, the extractor claw is spring loaded and removed through this port here. Um, I'm not gonna remove the extractor because it's a pain in the butt, but basically you want to, if you wanna get this out, uh, this uh, rod here extends into the uh, slide and at the base of it has a uh, quite a powerful spring. So in order to remove this extractor, you'll have to use something like a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver. You'll have to push that rod down so that you're able to then lift it up and out, similar to pulling out the mainspring. Um, once that's out, you can then just pull out the a extractor claw. Um, the problem is because of the, the position that it's in um, and due to how strong the spring is, when you try to take that out and you're using a flathead screwdriver as well. So it's, you know, there's no friction on it at all. So when you go to try to take that out, it just shoots off and you, it's happened to me and uh, you run the risk of losing that spring. And it's quite important to the functioning of this firearm. So first of all, you're gonna want a hammer and a punch. That's the right size. Um, oh, and before I start, um, I've noticed that on the SIG X5 uh, P226 pistols, um, the pin itself is a solid pin for, uh, from the factory, but both sides of it uh, are concave. Concave? No, they're convex. They're uh, rounded off at the end. So if you try to hit that with a flat punch, you're gonna slip off the side and put a nice big dent in the side of your frame. Uh, and you don't want that. So you need to be able to find a punch that has that is convex. It's, you know, uh, rounded on the inside of the punch. This one's not too bad though, because it's flat. So, what you do, just grab a piece of wood, that's just what I use. Now, the pin must go from the right side of the pistol to the left side, because it's slightly bigger on that side. So, Before I drive this pin completely out, uh, I thought I'd point out that the uh, firing pin itself is held under spring pressure. There's a uh, firing pin return spring pushing this way uh, and it's held in place by that pin. So as soon as that pin comes out, you'll see the firing pin pop out a bit. That's okay, it's not gonna shoot off anyway because the firing pin block holds it in place. Okay, so I've punched the pin out. And there's the firing pin popping out just there. All right, now to remove the firing pin, you have to depress the firing pin block. Now the firing pin will pop out at this point, so I'm just gonna put my hand there, depress the block. All right, wasn't too bad. So, 
The firing pin block is also under spring pressure, so you probably want your finger over it when you're pulling parts out. There you go, it pops out. Okay, so here's your firing pin block with its own spring. Here's the firing pin itself with its spring, firing pin return spring. Okay, so your slide is basically completely disassembled except for the extractor claw and the sights. It's just a solid hunk of metal now. Um, you can get in there and clean it out. I would advise not putting any sort of oil in there, maybe like a, a very light uh, wipe down of the firing pin because I think it's made, I don't, actually I don't think it's made of steel because it has to be much harder than that. So there's not really anything there that can rust. So I would put maybe a very fine film of oil in there and that's about it. Um, you don't want crap getting caught in there uh, over the lifetime of the pistol. So that's the slide completely disassembled uh, and you're able to clean all the bits and pieces. Back over to the SIG X5 again. And uh, this is one more place where the pistol differs from the standard P226s. The extractor claw is on the inside. It isn't on the outside of the frame. So it's an internal claw just here. And I'm not sure how to pull that out. I've never taken it out before. Um, all I know is that I don't think it has its own spring. Uh, if you can see the way that it's shaped, it seems to provide its own spring tension. So I think that that would just drop out this way, but I'm not sure. I haven't needed to take it out and I don't think I will. So I'll leave that in there. Okay, now time to reassemble the pistol. So we'll just reverse what it is that we've done so far. Um, and I'll run you through a couple of the important things that you need to remember. Um, to put the firing pin assembly back together, the block must go back into its well. And I find the easiest way to do this is to sit the firing pin block vertically with its spring on top, and then you put the slide in on top. Once in, the firing pin block will stay, uh, you know, will be popped out. Uh, because the spring won't allow it to sit flat until it's held captive by the firing pin. The firing pin block must be positioned in a way so that the gap in it is in the is in the upper right corner of the slide if held like this. So the firing pin block should sit exactly as shown. The firing pin has a couple of notches on it and the notches need to face uh, up relative to the slide. So in this case it would be down. So this not, the notches need to be on that side. Just reinsert the firing pin while also pushing down the firing pin block. trouble there. Okay, so now that the firing pin is in, it holds the firing pin block down. When the firing pin in goes in far enough, it'll all click into place. Just like that. Now, the roll pin will need to go back into the pistol. Make sure the pin goes back in, in the right orientation. There is a thinner end and a thicker end. Uh, and then that will need to be hammered in. Now, um, when you hammer the pin in, uh, like I said before, the firing pin is held captive by that pin. So as you can see, the firing pin is actually sticking out a little further than it would normally. So start the pin through the slide. And when it's sitting there, you'll need to hammer that uh, pin back in while also depressing the firing pin. Once that's captured, you know, you can just hammer it in the rest of the way. Uh, I'm actually going to take this to my workbench and not do it here. Okay, once the firing pin assembly is back together again, uh, just reassemble the slide like normal. And that's the slide finished. Okay, now we'll reassemble the frame. We'll start with the hammer assembly, followed shortly by the sear assembly. Now the hammer, if you remember from before, the hammer return spring I left in there, uh, the spring um, the spring arm needs to contact this pin on the hammer. 
Now, I can't remember which side the arm needs to be on, but once the hammer is in, you're able to sort of uh, get it to jump to both sides um, by pulling on the hammer. So we'll find out when I put it in. Okay. The hammer is in. Now, I can't actually remember which side the spring should be on. I'm pretty sure, pull back over here. The spring uh, puts pressure on the hammer in this direction, so it pulls it away from the firing pin. Now, the reason this is flopping right back down to a cocked position is because normally the sear would stop it about there. So it has pressure in this direction, but would stop there. So I'm pretty sure that that is correct. So now we'll install the uh, sear assembly. Now this is really tricky to do, uh, not because it requires any force, uh, you know, there shouldn't require any force at all to put this together, but because there's so many small parts and I can't get my fingers in there. So I'm probably gonna stuff up a lot, but I'll try and uh, assemble it for you guys. I'll demonstrate it. Um, I'll show you how it should look. Uh, if the frame is like this, then the first part that needs to go in, which is on the left side of the frame, should be the ejector. Now the first hole lines up with the roll pin that we've left in the frame, and the second hole will line up with the pin that we have punched out of the frame. So that will sit, come in first. Next up is the sear. Now the sear must point downwards and forwards just like that. Um, the sear will also have its sear spring on the inside and it will need to sit just like that. So if this is the front of the sear towards the front of the frame here, um, then the spring needs to have its uh, arm on the left side of the sear. This arm will sit underneath the roll pin that we've left in the frame and keep the whole thing under tension basically. So that will come next. So we'll put, the, put it together here. So, so far your assembly should look like this. And then the last part is this here, which is not a firing pin disconnect like I said before. I'm not sure what the part is called, but this part will sit on the pin uh, through this hole here and it will rotate upwards when you pull the trigger and this uh, tab here engages the firing pin block. So your firing pin at all times is blocked by the firing pin block. The gun will not go off. That's one of the safety features of the pistol. Uh, until you pull the trigger, and when this comes up, it pushes this button and moves the block out of the way for the firing pin. So your gun will not go off until you pull that trigger. Um, don't forget this part, very important, the gun won't work otherwise. So this will sit on the pin, uh, not like that, actually, yeah, I'll demonstrate it. The uh, block should not sit behind the sear, so there's this tab uh, protruding this way. It should not sit behind the sear and it shouldn't sit in front of the sear. Instead, it should sit on top of the triang uh, triangular uh, protrusion on the sear. So I'll take that off, put it back on properly. So the tab sits on top of the sear. So when the sear is uh, engaged by the trigger, it pushes the block up, just like that. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that this tab also engages the trigger bar at some point. The trigger bar would be here, and sits just like so. So I think that that's how it engages. Yeah, it engages the, uh, we'll call it the uh, firing pin block disconnect. It engages the disconnect while also pulling on the sear, firing uh, the pistol. Anyway, it needs to, uh, the assembly needs to look exactly like this, but in the frame of the pistol. So I'm going to try and put it together for you guys. Uh, it's probably going to take me a while because it's very finicky and I don't have thin fingers. So I'll start with the ejector.
Now the last piece is a bit tricky to get in because the hammer and the sear get in the way and it also needs to sit, like I said before, uh, just right on the sear. So I'm going to get that in. Alright, this is going to be a pain in the butt to get in. Too bad, got it in without the use of pliers. All right, so it just slides in from this side. Now that that's all in place, I'm gonna push the pin all the way in. Turn it this way so it can't possibly fall apart again. All right, so the assembly is put together. So we'll have, just recapping, the ejector, the sear, the sear spring, then the firing pin block disconnect on the right side. The hammer should sit as shown. Now we need to put tension on this spring, we need to put it back underneath that roll pin. Once this has tension on it, none of it will fall out basically, It'll, it holds it all in there. So you want to grab a flathead screwdriver and uh, put your fingers on either side of the pin so it definitely won't come back out again. Uh, and then grab the spring arm and just drag it down and across and under the pin that's, I don't know if you can see, the pin is uh, Doesn't require force, but uh, it's just a bit tricky to get in there, especially with a large screwdriver. Try a smaller screwdriver. All right, so now that has tension on it, uh, it won't fall out of the frame. So now we just gonna make sure that the trigger of the hammer is in the right position for the sear. Okay, it looks like it's in the right position. So the hammer is in the cocked position right now. There is no main spring on the hammer, so if I release the sear as if I pulled the trigger, the hammer won't fly forward. So we'll just try it out now. I'll push the sear. Pull the trigger, the gun fires, and then the hammer resets and clicks into place. So it sits just there, just like that. So that's correct. So yeah, so the hammer reset spring should put uh, rearward pressure on the hammer. So that's perfect. So that's at the uncocked position and the cocked position. We'll leave it uncocked for now because when we put the main spring back in, it'll make life a bit easier for us. All right. Next up, we'll put in the trigger bar and trigger assembly. You'll need these parts here. Trigger, trigger bar, trigger bar spring, and trigger pivot pin. Uh, you'll also need to include the slide catch lever because this also sits on that pin. So we'll start by putting the trigger bar onto the trigger. And the trigger bar will sit in the top hole, the smaller of the two. And the pivot goes through the bigger of the three. So we'll just drop this assembly as it is into the pistol. Alright, cool. So just after a bit of fiddling around it pops into place. So now what you want is this bar to sit behind that tab. So we'll pull it behind and it sits just like so. So what happens is when the bar is fully extended to the rear, it is stopped by this silver hammer pin. And then when the bar is pulled forward or the trigger is pulled, it engages that tab. So you want it to sit exactly as shown. So what I'm going to do is put in the slide catch lever. And put that pin through. Now, the pin should sit, uh, there's a notch on the pin. I don't, know, I don't know if you can see that, but there is a notch on the top side of this pin that needs to come out on the left side of the pistol. It doesn't matter which way you put the pin in as long as the notch is on the left side. Uh, you'll also notice that there's some cutouts on the pin as well. As I said earlier in the video, the cutouts need to be uh, on the bottom of the frame, so on this side of the frame, uh, pointing forwards and upwards basically because that locking block that we've taken out earlier needs to slide in diagonally. So what we'll do is put the pin in. Okay, got it. So that should be in place now. Now the pin itself needs to be, uh, the notch needs to be horizontal. Now I, I can't actually see where the notches are, but it needs to sit 
uh, horizontal with the frame, like so. And it's either this way or 180 degrees because the notches need to be on the bottom which is looking in through the top. Yeah, I've got it right the first time around. So I don't know if you can see, but the uh, pin has the notches on the underside of the pin. The top of the pin should be rounded. So that will sit like so. So just make sure that that's horizontal. All right. Now while we're here, we might as well do it now. It's usually the last step when putting the frame back together, but we'll do it now. Uh, the locking block needs to go back in just to hold that in place and it doesn't fall apart. The locking block goes in like this. So you, you'll start um, angled downwards and then sort of slot it into place. But it needs to go sort of from the front to the rear while also going downwards. Now looking at it side on, like I said at the start of the video, this spring needs to sit in this hole and needs to just sit up against that upper face basically. So when putting it back in, just make sure that the slide catch lever is pushed right up against the left wall of the frame and everything else should be holding itself in place. So we'll just get this and we'll put it in like so. Pin was out. So that should just sit in place now. Uh, while we're at it, we'll put the takedown lever back in and that'll lock everything in place. So same way it, uh, as it came out, just turn it. It's got a notch on there which is designed to sort of push the spring out of the way because if you look at it, the slide uh, catch lever spring sort of sticks into this uh, hole here. So what happens with, is when this lever is in that hole, it gives the spring its tension. Alright, lever's back in, make sure it's 90 degrees downwards as if you just pull the pistol apart for a field strip and everything should be locked in place now and nothing should fall out. That locking block stops this pin from turning and falling out. Alright, so next up we'll put the trigger bar spring back in. So the hooked end will sit in this hole. Oh, sorry, before we do that, this needs to go back into place. Uh, now it'll sit into particular shape, but it'll sit, there's a sort of tab on the bottom of it. That tab runs into a rail on the bottom side of the hole. And then the, the stud protrudes out the right side of the pistol. So that needs to go in like that. So you just put that there and it slides in on a rail. Now that that's in, you can put this spring back in, which will hold it in place. So the spring, the uh, L-shaped end will go into this hole. And then the other end is a U-shaped end, will hook under this notch, like I said earlier in the video. We'll hold it in place. So the trigger should function now, and it should return when you let go of it. This spring returns the trigger. Just test the sear. So cocked, you pull the trigger, you should release the hammer. All right, uh, that's all back together. We'll put in the, we'll put in the controls on this side actually. So we'll put back in the magazine release. Now the uh, cutout needs to be to the rear of the pistol because that's what holds the magazine in place. It'll lock up, uh, there's a tab on this, on the right side of the button and that'll lock up with the magazine and lock it in place basically. And it won't come undone until you push it in and the magazine is able to uh, drop free from these two bits engaging. So what I'll do is put the button back in, make sure the spring is on the end. It's the larger of the two springs. Now you'll need to grab the, uh, plug. Now to get this back in, you shouldn't need any tools, just use a fingernail or something. And uh, I don't know if you can see, but the pin, the plug, has a cutout, half of it's cut out on one end. The cutout is what sits uh, inside the frame, and then the, uh, the shorter half of the cutout sits outside of the frame. It's the part that you see when you have to push it in with a pocket knife or something. So when the frame is orientated like this, you will want the piece, the little plug sitting like this with the uh, protruding cutout 
uh, on the right side of the pistol. So we'll put that back in. And then you just make sure that piece is straight. Push it in with your fingernail while also pushing down on the magnet catch button. And should click into place. And then the whole thing, just test the button, it's not going to fall out. Alright. Okay, now we'll put the decocking lever back in. Right, now this bushing sits on the inside of the frame. Uh, like I said before, now it should sit with the protrusion to the rear of the pistol. So it'll sit on the inside just like that. It'll only go in one way. So we'll get that in first. Like so. So you should be able to see the tab at the back here. Alright, and the lever goes on top. Alright, and then the spring sits in it like so. Alright, once that's in, you just gotta drop this spring into this hole to give it tension. Put the thumb on top so it doesn't pop out. Any key suppliers for this one? Alright, once that's in, the lever should uh, function correctly, so we'll test that. Uh, like, a, there's no um, mainspring in there right now, so I'll just simulate it by putting upwards pressure on the hammer. The gun is cocked, put pressure on the hammer to decock. It should trip the sear, and the hammer will drop forwards. So, that's working fine. Uh, I guess all there is left to do is to put the main spring in back in. So, now this is a little tricky because this hammer strut needs to sit like so inside the pistol, but um, it's hard to tell when it's gone in correctly and you won't know until you put the thing together and then the hammer has no tension on it basically. So I can't show you how it works, but this would sit uh, inside the hammer. The hammer has a slot cut down the middle of it basically. So this needs to go inside the hammer. So I'll just I'll lever it in. And you basically just need to wiggle until it go, uh, goes as far up as it can possibly go. Now I can test this by putting, cocking the hammer, firing the gun, and I should be able to just push the strut up just like that. So that means if there was a spring there, that would fire. So that's how you know that this is connecting the hammer correctly. Uh, and it sits quite shallow to the rest of the frame and you're not able to pull up that strut out any further because it sits uh, right up against the, the hole it's supposed to go into. It sits right up against that. So it's pretty much locked in place like that. So we'll hold it here just like that. Put the mainspring back on. Now, you shouldn't need a screwdriver for this part, but just do the reverse of what it took to take it out. So wrap your hand around it so it can't shoot off in any other direction. You'll put the spring into this cup. Get the spring ready. So now you just use your thumb and push that straight up and down into the notch. I'm gonna put my hand around that. You just wanna go straight up. in place, it's not going to go anywhere now, test the hammer, I'm not going to fire it because the hammer has nothing to hit against so it would damage the pin that it's sitting on so I'm just going to decock it. That's all functioning correctly now. So the frame is basically done, we'll just put the grips back on.
Yeah, and that's the complete reassembly of the pistol. You just put it back together like you normally would. Bring the trigger. Seems to be working fine. And there you have it. That's how you completely disassemble your pistol. Thanks for watching.